All right, we'd like to welcome our internet congregation, uh, Chilliquin Congregation. Let's give them a hand for that. Awesome. Well, praise God. So we're just going to jump right into this. I got a smoking hot message and a smoking hot wife. So they'll kind of they'll kind of go together, amen. So uh, while you're going on 30 years, you better say that once in a while, amen. All right, amen. So um, how many people did your M and M messages? Anybody do an M and M message? Sam, Nick, John. Wow, you guys are going to get sweetened up a little bit. So those of you watching on the internet. I know it's kind of repetitive. You know, we've got several hundred people that tune in that are um, on the core group. But you need to realize every week when I mention the M&M messages, mirror message, where you preach um, in the mirror to yourself, hundreds of new people each week watch these videos. So we have people getting saved and within the first week, they're preaching a message in the mirror, and that, that's exciting. So I want to read to you the scripture verse out of James 1, 22 through 25. And it's out of the Message Bible, and those of you that are watching online, you can look that up on the internet, the Message Bible. And it's kind of a paraphrased Bible. It's kind of broken down to where um, you can understand the language. And I know that this Bible is written in uh, many different languages, so um, check it out. Don't fool yourself into thinking, this is James 1, 22 through 25, into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but, letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are or what they look like. It's going to be very important in the last days to know who you are in Christ. Amen. Yes. It's, it's going to, and the Word of God is what reflects that continually on our minds. Yeah. The Bible says to wash your mind, and you wash your mind with the Word of God. Amen? We listen to a lot of radio, we listen to a lot of news, we listen to a lot of information, and it can actually be depressing. But the Word of God is motivational, and, uh, and it's eternal too. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eye, and sticks with it, is no distracted scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action, that person will find delight and affirmation in action. You know, when we stagnate, the enemy will isolate you. A lot of people, when they start getting depressed or discouraged, I don't want to be around people. Um, I don't want to deal with even listening to somebody. And you've got to be very careful when you isolate because you might not come back for a while. I mean, people think, oh, it'll just be a week or two, and then mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's several years. Mm -hmm. And then if drugs or alcohol or abuse or anything comes into play, then you can really get dysfunctional in that place. Amen? Amen. So, um, free life. <laughs> That's what the Word of God brings to you is the free life. Mm -hmm. Free from those things. So the homework, I'm assigning this again. And um, some people have watched David Wilkerson, and a lot of people have never heard of David Wilkerson, but check out David Wilkerson on YouTube on end times, especially pertaining to America. And so we're going to jump right into the message tonight. And um, I've kind of been on this, just tying in the messages and doing a little bit of review from the previous week. But the title of my message tonight is Telling God, Please Excuse Me. And as we get into the Word, it's really going to show us we better be careful to not do that. Hmm. Telling God, Please Excuse Me. 
So I looked up the definition of telling. The definition of telling is to express with words, thoughts, or feelings. As we get into this message, we've got to be very careful with our words, with our thoughts, and you can't be motivated by your feelings. Feelings of anger, feelings of rage, <clears throat> feelings of disappointment. You've got to walk by faith, not by how you feel. A lot of people have gotten into a lot of trouble by becoming emotional in a dysfunctional situation. A lot of you, when you deal with people, you try to be practical and you're dealing with an impractical person. So when your practicality doesn't work on them, guess what? You become impractical. You get frustrated, you get irritated, and let me tell you something, in the next few weeks in our nation, great pressure. In the next few weeks on the planet, what's going on in some of these foreign countries and assassinations and, and things like that. I'm not going to name names because we have people from all over the world watch this mm -hmm. and they're going to receive Christ. So telling, telling God, please excuse me. So when we tell something, our free will gets involved and our free will is the ability to choose different possible courses of action. So really think about your life in the next few days because your free will has the ability to set your course of action. So I looked up the definition of please and that's why I put free will above it. The definition of please is the will. So if I ask Debbie please what happens Sean if she says no she uh, sets her course well and then and you're right then I choose to either accept that she rejected what I asked for with my free will <coughs> I'm, I'm trying to tie this into where we're going because a lot of times when you ask someone please there's the potential for them to say no. Even though you're being courteous, Nick, and saying please, then once they say no, then you've got to decide if you're going to submit to that answer. Yeah, and then exactly. But if they say yes, there's news usually not a problem. So the, the definition of please, and when I looked this up, I thought the will. And then the definition of excuse is to release from a duty or a requirement. And all this is going to come into play as we start peeling this onion here in a few minutes. Or an apple, whatever pleases you. <laughs> an orange, whatever, you know, gets you focused. So let's do a little bit of review from last week. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter 9, verses 36 through 38. We, we want to tie this in because it's very important when we think about the title, telling God, please excuse me. And always remember, God is not on your time schedule. <laughs> He's not on your timeline. His world does not revolve around your schedule. All right. Matthew 9, 36 through 38, John. Whenever I get that little glance from John, that means that I haven't given the scripture verse. <laughs> so all you young preachers out there, learn to look at people looking at you and you'll know that you haven't done something yet. Matthew 9, 36 through 38. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You really need 
to realize you've got to start seeing what Jesus sees. Or your life is going to be so busy that you have tunnel vision. Oh, you get up in the morning. Oh, I got this, 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 and this to do. And you completely blow by any potential for the Lord to inconvenience you. You'll, you'll get that in a couple of weeks. It, it'll, it'll come to you. You've got to be very careful when you wake up in the morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. Back to that will. Because the Lord might be asking you, could you please do this for me today? And guess what happens when he gets the big no? <laughs> not good for you. Because he'll wait till you do that lap for 12 months in the desert. Ever done a lap for a year? Ever come back around, Sean and Randy are going, weren't we here a year ago? Just like in football practice, when I played a lot of football when I was younger, take a lap. Take a lap. Verse 37, then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers. And we're going to tie this right into tonight's message. So that was review from last week. So the title tonight is Telling God, Please Excuse Me. Let's go over those definitions one more time. Telling is to express words, thoughts, feelings. I put free will in here to tie in with the next definition. The free will, the ability to choose different possible courses of action. The definition of please is the will. Excuse, release me from a duty, excuse, Release me from a duty or a requirement. These are going to come into play here. So let's go to Luke chapter 14. Starting at verse 15. Luke chapter 14. Starting at verse 15. The Gospel of Luke. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And this is happening right now prophetically. It's happening in the earth. We know that we're at the end of the sixth day, the 6,000th year. We're going into the millennial reign. No one knows the day or the hour, but you'll know the season. And, and we can see how God is all around the world inviting people to this great banquet. But what's unique about what Jesus is speaking of here is he knows these people. Ouch. Ouch. This is God speaking to the body of Christ, to the people He knows, saying, hey, I'm preparing this. I, I need you to come. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those he had invited Come for everything is now ready. God has prepared everything. But they all alike began to make excuses. Definition of excuse. Release me from 
my duties, release me from my requirements. Release me from my duty, release me from my requirement. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought some property. I just bought a new house. I just bought a place. And I must go and see it, please. So what was please? The will. Yeah. So Sam, here we are telling the Lord, please, I don't want to do my duty. I don't want to do what you required of me because I have purchased something and it is more important to me than being where you are. Yeah. Hey, I believe in prosperity. I believe in being blessed. But when your prosperity and your blessing lead you away from being obedient to Christ and those things become your God, yeah. Yeah. taking care of them, fixing them, and, and, and you're just consumed we're right here. Here's this great banquet. A certain man was preparing, had a relationship with this individual. But guess what? I just bought a piece of property. God wants you to have property. He wants you to have homes. He wants you to have things. But your things can't have you. Amen. If your things have you, when God asks you to do something, it will be an inconvenience. Because you built this huge schedule to take care of your stuff and God asks you, hey, Bernie, I need you to do this for me. I, you know, hey, God, hey, I, I've got a schedule. Please excuse me from my duty or my requirement of being a servant. Oh, it, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> Another said, I just bought five quads. I just bought a new deer hunting rifle. I just bought a new bow. It's elk season. I, I got to go try it out. I just bought this. I just bought a new boat. I just bought a new fishing pole. Well, Randy, you're going a little over and above. I'm, I'm just elaborating. <laughs> Another said, I just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me, my will from my duty and death my requirements. This is going to get real thick at the end. I'm going to put a nice bow on it, a nice cherry on top. So all of you that are watching, and especially the group, hey, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm, I'm coming. Don't turn the video off either. <laughs> Still another said, I just got married, and he doesn't even ask, please. I just got married, so I can't come. I mean, there wasn't even a will, uh, an opportunity for God to say, hey, Bernie, the wife or husband, it could, it could be a woman saying, I just got married, even superseded saying, please. Superseded saying, excuse me from my duty. This marriage superseded even the opportunity for God to change your will. I know this is some heavy, but it's a heavy time, man. We got to be throwing some some meat out here. Sucking on your baba, getting your buck teeth ain't going to work. We got to get you off the nipple, man. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant 
Go out quickly. This is happening right now all around the earth. When we see people weekly coming to Christ all around the world from a simple video from Chiloquin, that shows me God is going out quickly because His servants are too busy with their stuff. They've accumulated all of this stuff and they can only make time if it doesn't inconvenience them from their relationship with their family, their relationship with their wife. Now, Randy, that's getting a little tough here. Hey, right here, the guy said, I just got married. That meant that that superseded what the master was asking. Where did Jesus say those leave family, leave father, leave mother, brother, sister? There's going to come a time when you got to make a choice. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The owner of the house became angry and said, Go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. So all of a sudden, the master said, Go out within the perimeter of just the city. And go out quickly. Right now, people are coming to Christ rapidly around the world through the internet technology. Daniel prophesied, knowledge will increase. Men will run to and fro seeking information. Seeking knowledge and information will just... People will just crave it. He said that's one of the big signs of Jesus' return yeah. is information and knowledge constantly gorging on the screen, man. Constantly needing to know the gossip. Constantly needing to know the Facebook. Constantly needing to know what the Twitter is. And your mind never can go quiet. Because you're constantly, and by the time you get so exhausted from taking in information, you're not good for anything. And then you go to work like a zombie apocalypse survivor. <laughs> and then you try to witness to somebody. You want to be like me? No. No. We're more messed up than the world is. <laughs> Go out quickly in the streets and the alleys of the town, bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind. He comes back, sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Guess what? There's still room. Yes. There's still room. If there wasn't still room, the rapture would have happened. Yeah. That's right. The seven That's year, right. you guys better watch the Middle East, man. We got aircraft carriers moving around. We got stuff going on. All it's going to take is one little trigger to go off and everything goes sideways. And all the big players are there. All of them are prepared for the Valley of Armageddon. They will all be pulled into that location. Because the Bible says that. Then the master told the servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel it. So now we're going way beyond the perimeter. Now we're taking roads, distances, amen? And compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Now verse 24 is really bad news for the lukewarm Christian. I've been teaching on this. This is a really bad news for the lukewarm Christian that said, you know what, God, please excuse me because right here is where you're going to land. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get the taste of my banquet. 
It's a very harsh re reality that we live in the Laodicean church age. That's the seventh church dispensation of the book of Revelation. And Jesus said, you're not hot, you're not cold. You know all about me, but you have no desire to be inconvenienced. You've acquired wealth. You've gained, you've gained all these things. And when I require you to do something to take you away from your stuff, you always say, please excuse me from my duties and from my requirements. Yes, Carol. So I looked up the definition of quickly a fast speed rapidly. And I, I've been ministering a long time and what God is doing through the internet and going right into people's homes, He's just <laughs> rapidly bypassing the archaic brick and mortar buildings and going right into the homes. Paul said, I become all things to all men that I may win some. God is utilizing what Daniel prophesied to go right after people. Yeah. The book of Acts says, they'll, Deb, they'll just say the name of Jesus. Just, just say Jesus and they'll be saved. Not a hermeneutical dissertation of the book of Philippians. We are messed up, man. I'm, I'm just saying, Sam, I agree with you, but as, as a whole, generically, generically, generic Christians, I love it. Quickly, a fast speed rapidly. He also used the word here, compel. The definition of compel, someone to do something. The word compel means someone that will actually do something. He just went to all the people that could acquire the stuff, had all the things, and all of a sudden he comes to them and says, hey, I'm preparing this banquet. And guess what? They were not compelled to do anything except what their will wanted to do. Compel. Someone to do something. Servant. A person who performs duties. Let's go back to excuse me. Excuse. Release from duty. Oh my goodness. When we're not a servant, we don't do the duties. It's howdy duty time. <laughs> A servant is a person who always tells Jesus yes. Because a servant always does the duties and the requirements. We've got millions of lukewarm Christians across America that if it inconveniences their schedule, the answer is Please excuse me. You know, Sean, they put a little polite on there. Oh, please. <laughs> and you know what that please word means? The will. A servant is a person who performs duties. Please excuse me from my duties. I do not want to serve Jesus. Please excuse me from my duties. I do not want to serve Jesus. It's too inconvenient to my free will. Please excuse me. I don't want to serve Jesus. It's too inconvenient to my free will. Now, a lot of ministers are getting frustrated in the end times. That's why over 1,500 a month are quitting. I'm not getting frustrated because in the Word of God, it shows me 
this is the way it's going to be. There's no need for me to get frustrated with the people who aren't here because you are here. Yeah. You made the decision, this is where I'm going to be. Oh, but Randy, it was Thanksgiving. And all oh, this, that, and the other, and family, and people visiting, and everything. I got it. But that ain't going to work with Jesus, man. That, that's not going to work with the Lord. You know, I was thinking about Christians I've known for years. And they're not going to finish well. They give their best years, Nick, in the front end of their ministries. They sacrificed. They were always there. And, and, and Paul said, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Let me tell some of you watching, it doesn't matter how you started. It doesn't matter how much you sacrificed mid-range. What's going to matter is how you finish. How you finish. Because Jesus is standing at the end of your life. You, you need to put that in your little database. He's standing and he's going to be there and see how you finished. I'm going to read this one more time for the hearing impaired on the internet. Please excuse me from my duties. I do not want to serve Jesus. You know Jesus. You love Jesus. You know Jesus loves you. You have a pretty confident that you're saved. But when He calls, do you come? When He calls, do you say, please excuse me from my duty? Once you do that, you no longer are a servant. Your free will has superseded that. Oh, my wife's calling, Randy. Okay, that's in the Bible too. Oh, my husband's calling, Randy. Oh, that's in the Bible too because we don't know if it was a man or a woman. Hey, I just got married. That supersedes me following Christ. A good message. A good message. So let's go to Matthew 6.33. See what's so awesome when you're not a hireling? You're not paid to tickle the ears of the people that have gathered around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. You can just have fun. This is fun. Aren't you having fun? Yeah. Because we want to be challenged. We don't want to be. Here's your bottle because you paid. 3,000 bucks a month. Here's your bottle. You sent me to Hawaii. Here's your bottle. The elder's wife, you know, she she makes sure everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Randy, you don't know what you're talking about. Trust me. I've been around the barn and past the hot dog stand a couple of times. <laughs> don't let this pretty face fool you. Matthew 6.33 But seek first the kingdom and His righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. So I know if I'm seeking the kingdom, everything I need is right there for me. And I looked up the word seek. I'm a big definition person. Sean, the definition of seek is to desire. Seek first the kingdom. What do you really desire when you get up in the morning? What are you really craving when you get up? Is it the kingdom of God? Or is it your schedule, your stuff, the things you've got to do? 
You're like an old Frankenstein movie. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Yes. So let's go back to Luke 14, 15. Let's see if there's something here that we missed about this kingdom thing. Back to Luke 14, 15. Luke 14, 15. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Boy, does that Matthew verse make that one ring a little bit louder. And then guess what Jesus talks about? This is what's going to eliminate you from being in the kingdom of God. Because you're no longer seeking me first. You're seeking these things. So when I ask you to be somewhere to do your duty, you say, I'm no longer going to serve you, Jesus, when it's not convenient for me. And I wrote the word ouch again here. Mm -hmm. See, I've got to really as a leader, as a minister, as somebody that leads people and teaches and tries to guide people, I really got to stay patient because Christianity in the nation I live in is destroying itself. It has a form of godliness, Deb, but it has no power. No power at all. Because you'll talk to somebody and they know the Christianese, but Sean, there's no hustle with the muscle. You, you can feel when they talk that if anything else came up, Nick, they're going to go do that. Anything else pulls them away, this becomes the priority. And what they don't realize, they're not going to finish well. Well, Randy, I'm burnt out. Well, Randy, I, I just don't want to. Boy, I'm glad Jesus didn't say that at Calvary. Yes, hallelujah. I'm glad his blood didn't say that on the cross. Here's old Paul shipwrecked. Gets on the island trying to be nice, picking up some wood. And guess what? Gets bit by a viper. All the island looks at him and goes, this man is cursed. Look at he gets saved from the sea, but now he's going to die in the next 10 minutes. See, you have all had opportunities in your life to shake it off. Amen. But instead of shaking it off, you just let it hang. And when he shook it off, it fell into the fire. And those people waited and watched. A lot of you, your situations where you've been tested were for you to shine the brightest. And once he didn't die, it opened a whole door. Be very careful in the end times of your complaining and your murmuring and your gossiping and, and your telling God, please excuse me, I already give you my best. And it didn't work for me. I got wounded. I got injured. I lost my church. I lost this and that. Rand, why are you so aggressive? Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> and that we're taught a football game? Mm -hmm. I'm not being aggressive. I'm just being direct. Mm -hmm. You're compelling. Compelling. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because I've got mature people sitting in front of me tonight. <laughs> so I need you guys to go where God wants you to go. Amen? So let's pray with these now on the internet. You've been watching and you might say, Randy, I, I want to know Jesus. Well, he wants to know you too. But this that I just taught you 
this is very serious because you're living in a lukewarm world. You're living in the time of the lukewarm Christianity. And so when you make this decision, you cannot be dependent on the church structure. You can't even be dependent on the body of Christ. You need to be dependent on Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Amen. Now you're part of the body of Christ, and you need to be an example to the rest of the body. But I cannot be dependent on a person. Oh, I didn't feel like coming, Ren. I didn't feel like going. Hey, my, my family, you know, I had to go do something else. You know, we just read that that's what happened. I just got married and didn't even say, please excuse me. So when you pray this prayer, the Bible says the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity will come in and abide within you. You will become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You will become the mobile church. You will become the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, Rand, I don't understand all this. You would never will. If you live to be 100, you will not figure this out. We walk by faith, not by sight. So it says, those who believe, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. But your codependency needs to be on the Trinity. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? But the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, teach you, comfort you. And the Bible even says you won't even need a Randy to teach you. But you'll miss Randy, so you'll come back. <laughs> but it says you will not even need a man to teach you. Yes. Right. Oh, I thank you for the Bible. So let's pray with these. Milking this cow a little long. So just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and, died and died and paid for my sins. For my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, you rose again that you rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into, my heart, into my heart as my Lord, as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 And just remember, people are watching what you prioritize. People are watching what compels you, what you're passionate about, what you're seeking, what you're desiring. It comes out in everything you talk about. If it's the 49ers, then that's all you're going to talk about. If it's the Lakers, that's all you're going to talk about. If it's Alabama playing LSU, that's all we're going to hear you talk about. And none of those things are bad. But if all of a sudden, all we hear you talk about, oh, my house, oh, deer hunting, oh, fishing, oh, this, oh, that. Jesus said, I've called you to be fishers of Men, the Bible says you're a living book read by people. So I want you to ask yourself this week, what are people reading when they see my life? Consistency or inconsistency? On fire for Jesus or lukewarm saying, please excuse me, I just got a ball and chain. I mean married. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Love you guys. See you next week.